Today we're going to be talking about one of the key subjects of this course, question answering. But before we dive into how you actually build question answering systems, we're going to talk about some of the foundations that come first. Answering questions often depends on knowing what are the key entities in your data set. Who did what to whom? And this problem is often called information extraction. Sometimes it's called text analytics in the more commercial realm. In both cases, what you need to do is you need to find what the entities are in your data set. So things like people, organizations, places. And then you need to discover the relationships between these entities. Then you could use that to answer questions. So let's see what this task would actually look like. Let's say that you have a piece of text like so, you need to identify that the European Commission is an organization, Britain is a location, and the Welsh National Farmers Union is an organization. And not only do you need to identify the exact spans of text, so European Commission is the second and third token in this piece of text, you also need to label it to say what kind of named entity it is. Named entity recognition is often considered a tagging task. In tagging tasks, you need to take a span of text, and for every token in the piece of text, you need to say what tag is associated with that token. And there are many ways that you can do this. Machine learning tools like hidden Markov models, conditional random fields, LSTMs, all of these work, and they work rather well. You get over 90% accuracy on newswire data, and so this is often considered a solved task. After you've done named entity recognition, you can go on and do the information extraction tasks that you would like to do. And there's good software that you can use to do this. Once you get away from Newswire, where you have training data for this task, the performance gets quite a bit worse. So if you're trying to apply this to Twitter, don't expect 90% accuracy. So let's see what the tagging task would look like for named entity recognition. So let's say that you have a piece of text that looks like this. One thing that makes this task a little bit harder is that sometimes you have named entities that span multiple tokens. So you can't just say William is a person and Wong is a person. You need to say that they're not two different people, they're the same person, and the name spans two tokens. So how do you do that? You use what's called bio-tagging. So you have three types of tags, beginning tags, inside tags, and outside tags. So William would be a beginning tag, and Wong would be an inside tag. And so then you know, once you've seen William, and if it's followed by an inside tag, then William Wong is the whole name of a person. Beijing would have just the beginning tag for location, and William would have the beginning tag for person, and Wong would have the inside tag for person. So each type of entity would have its own beginning and inside tags. Everything else gets labeled as outside. Once we can identify entities in text, we now need to have connections between them. This is called relation extraction. And we can get some training data from resources like Wikipedia. So look at the info box or the categories of Wikipedia, and we can learn things like ATS Medical is an example of a company that works in the healthcare domain. And we can get things like Where the Sidewalk Ends is an example of a film noir movie. So that's great. These are very high precision facts that we can extract from databases, but the recall is relatively low. So can we use natural language text to improve our recall? One way of doing that is something called Hearst patterns. So if you see the piece of text, temples, treasures, and other important civic buildings, you know that temples and treasuries are both examples of civic buildings. Common law countries, including Canada and England, if you see that text or other things where you have Y including X, you know that Canada and England are examples of common law countries. So you can get a, a lot of examples like this. And these are much higher recall than what people laboriously type into knowledge resources like Wikipedia or Freebase. The downside, however, is that even though we start with high precision seeds, 
as we expand out the set of relationships, we can quickly go astray. And it's really hard to tell when you've gone astray. You basically need to have a human to verify whether the additional facts that you've extracted still make sense and are true. So let's see an example of how this can go wrong. So let's say that we find some good stuff like Germany's capital, Berlin. And so then we can say, aha, uh, whenever we see uh, X is capital Y, that means that uh, X is the capital of Y. And if we see things like X, the elder statesman of Y, then you can know that uh, X is the Bundeskanzler of Y, uh, since we know for sure that Helmut Schmidt was the Bundeskanzler of Germany. And that's great. Now we can do things like answer questions like, where did Helmut Schmidt preside over the Bundestag? Great, we can chain these two relations together, and we've answered a question. Easy peasy. But now we go off and we apply these relations elsewhere. Uh, so country's music capital is Nashville. We see that in a piece of text. And uh, Charlie Lovin, uh, the elder statesman of country music. And so then we can answer questions like, where did Charlie Lovin preside over the Bundestag? Nashville. So these two questions we actually answered incorrectly. So Helmut Schmidt was indeed the Bundeskanzler of Germany, but he presided over the Bundestag in Bonn, not Berlin. So one thing that these systems don't have a great sense for are the temporal dynamics. Is a fact always true? Or when was it true? Or do some people believe it? So there, there's no higher order reasoning about how true something is, even if it has been attested in our knowledge base. And then uh, we can go totally astray for questions like Charlie Eleven. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, the Bundestag has never been in Nashville. Now that we've seen how we can extract entities and their relationships, we're now going to move on to more difficult ways of mentioning entities, not mentioning by name, but linking up oblique mentions of entities together so we can do more complicated forms of relation extraction.